Our archive's official name is Bogdan Medvitsky Ukrainian Folklore Archives, and it's part of the Cool Folklore Center at the University of Alberta, which is a research unit within the Faculty of Arts. It, it's, it's a folklore archives, and, and folklore is the life of everyday people. It's not the, the official formal recording of history. Archives, uh, together with libraries and museums, they're considered memory institutions, so they preserve society's collective memory, and that's why they're very important. Archives are different from other memory institutions in a way that they mostly preserve documented memory. In the history books, we know about Shakespeare, we know about Taras Shevchenko in the Ukrainian community, but there were many other small playwrights and many other small poets, farmers who wrote poetry um, just for themselves. And it doesn't have to be necessarily on paper, it can be documented on tape and different other media, so it doesn't really matter what medium is used. It's about documentation of the past and present for the future. We have a huge collection of t-shirts from the 1960s and 70s when it was really popular to go to a festival and get a t-shirt from the Dauphin Festival, from the Bloor Street Festival. There, there are all these items. Everybody had a t-shirt that they wore. That's part of our heritage, our Ukrainian-Canadian heritage. Like they, they also reflect what was happening in North American culture, because all these kids wore, watch The Simpsons. So you've got Bart Simsky showing up on t-shirts and talking about pierogies. It's like memes now on the internet. The t-shirts reflect sort of what, what was being talked about at the time, what was, what was the local common language. So, you know, it's saying that, you know, we, we uh, acknowledge our identity, cultural identity, our heritage, our roots, but also we are, uh, part of the community here in North America, and we know what's going on here. We're not living in isolation. The uh, Bhutan Medvitsky archives are important for anybody doing research on Ukrainian or Ukrainian-Canadian topics. Well, there's material in them that you can't find anywhere else. By far the, the biggest, the best organized, and the most user-friendly. For archives, context is very important. And if you think of uh, photograph, a historic photograph, for example, it can be very beautiful, uh, but if we don't know who is in this picture, who took this picture, when it happened, where it happened, all this contextual information is very important, and who's, who kept it and why they kept it. So all these things, all this context is very, very important for archivists, and this is how they describe archives, this is how archival descriptions are created, and this is how archives can be uh, found. This is a most recent donation to the archives. It's a collection of correspondence from a family in Toronto. For a long time, they supported a Ukrainian boy in Brazil uh, who studied in a seminary. So there are different letters and I can show you. They tell a story about a family, about a person, about their, them, him becoming a Brazilian father, about hardships they had to deal with. Their mother uh, died and left six children behind. It adds to what we know about the Ukrainian community there. Archivists understand that they are also active shapers of the history because archivists decide what to accept, what not to accept, and by doing so, we inevitably influence what tomorrow will be known as history.